Calvin Coconut Zoo Breath by Graham Salisbury Chapter 1 A Good Stink Ugh! Stella snapped, turning around in the front seat of the car. Get that thing away from me. It was Sunday and mom was driving us to the grocery store. Stella was 16. She is from Tex she, she she had come from Texas to live with us and help mom. She was in high school studying ways to mess up my life. Me and my sister Darcy were in the back seat with Streak, my dog. Streak was sitting on my knees, hanging her head over the front seat, breathing on Stella. I gave Streak a hug and sat back, pulling her close. She licked my ear. Stella glared over her shoulder. Did you just let that stinky dog lick germs all over you? Streak doesn't have germs and anyway dogs have clean tongues. Stella shook her head and turned back. I sniffed the top of Streak's head. I don't smell any drink. Stella mumbled, you wouldn't. Mom glanced into the rear view mirror. Stella's right, Calvin. Streak does smell, especially her breath. Maybe she can stick her head out the window instead of hanging over the front seat. I hugged Streak. So what if she was a little stinky? All dogs smelled, but it was a good stink, not a bad one. Still, I had just adopted her from the human society. And the last thing I needed was for mom to make me take Strick back because she had bad breath. I glanced over at Darcy, who was bouncing P.T. on her knee. P.T. was a green, pink sized stuffed parrot with small dried bean beans in it. Mom's boyfriend, Lee Ward, had given it to her. P.T. was Darcy's favorite thing in, her, in the world. For now, anyway, I leaned close and whispered. Hey, Dars, smell Streak's breath and see if you think it drinks. Stella had ears like an elephant. Don't you dare. Don't fall for it, Darcy. He's tricking you. I am not, I said. Then smell it yourself. <laughs> Puff. I huffed. Then scooted back to my side of the back seat. I knew Streak's breath was terrible. Stella smirked. See, Darcy, he won't even do it himself, and it's his dog. Will you? I mumbled, but didn't. I inched Streak forward, aiming her breath at Stella. Calvin, Mom said. Man, she had eyes in the back of her head. I put the window down and let Streak hang her head out. She loved it. A spit flew off her tongue in the wind. I was worried really worried because mom and Stella had been coming complaining more than usual about Streak. How she smelled, chewed up everything inside, left dog do all over the yard and shed hair in the house even though she was only allowed in the kitchen to eat. She slept in my room which wasn't even in the house but in the garage. My friend's Willie's dog got it got to be in his house. I slumped in my seat. Could mom make me get rid of Streak? Would she? One time mom stepped into uh, one time mom stepped in some of the Streak's dog dew in the yard and nearly bit my head off. I wish she would have gotten a fish for a pet. Then she bought me a shovel and wrote on handle with a big fat black sharpie. Calvin's pooper scooper. Use this every day, rain or shine, she said. Toss the stuff into the bushes away from the house. Fine, I did that, rain or shine. I can take a lot. Calvin, mom said now. But that dog's breath is disgusting. Stella butted in. I stuck my head out the window with the streak. She has... She was the best dog that ever lived, but I was going to lose her. It was just a matter of time.
Chapter 2 Detectives Next week in the class, Mr. Purdy smiled and spread his hands. Good morning, boot campers. It's Friday. Good morning, Mr. Purdy. We droned. It was only half listening because I was thinking about Streak, how she was always so happy to see me when I got home from school. Mr. Purdy rubbed his hands together. He looked at us, flicked his eyebrows. Hey, first the arm, now the eyebrows. This could only mean trouble. I looked out the window from my front row seat another sunny morning at Kalula L Elementary School. Nice day to lose a dog. Stop. I turned back to Mr. Purdy. Okay, he said. Let's get started. Today I'm going in, uh, to introduce you to something so fun. You will really think you are on vacation. Ready? We all perked up. Vacation? Shyla bounced in her seat. What is it, Mr. Purdy? Shyla sat next to me. She, uh, she was a know-it-all pest. And, make me f and to make things worse, she was always smiling at me. She thinks you are cute, my friend Maya once told me. Cute? Blah. Yeah, Mr. Purdy, Reuben shouted from back. We are... Are we going on a class trip or something? That way, uh, that we are, guys. That we are. Because today I'm going to introduce you to Discovery. Ha! Huh. Primary research, Mr. Purdy added. I got it so, I got so quiet. I couldn't, I could almost hear the ants sneaking up on Shayla's pink and purple lunchbox. Doreen raised her hand. Is that like looking things up and stuff? That would be that that would be called secondary research, Doreen, or research that that's already been done. This is called primary research, which means you'll be the first to do it. Silence, Mr. Purdy chuckled. This will be fun, trust me. You you are all going to be detectives. You are all going to ask discovery question. Then answer it. You can interview people, make an observation, gather and analyze things that haven't been analyzed before. Think of possibilities. This was a vacation. Then Mr. Purdy continued. You will present your findings to class. Boy, are we in for a fun time. You could have heard a mosquito burp in the classroom. Come on, boot campers, Mr. Purdy said. You have got till next Tuesday. I'm going to show you how fascinating it can be to discover and study something new. And you can study whatever you want. No pressure, no rules, no limits. Well, I take that back. I wouldn't want you researching the value of picking your nose or why you should sleep in class, of course. That got a few snickers. Still, this this all sounded like work. I urge you to use props too, Mr. Purdy added. Reuben raised his hand and spoke at the same time. What props, Mr. Purdy? Something to help you present your finding, Reuben. Let's say you discovered something about something knew about cockroaches. Then, to help you explain it to the class, you might bring in a cockroach in a, con in a container. That would be a prop. You can also make posters, take photographs, or bring in va various objects. Those would all be props. Cockroaches, I said it to myself. Once Mr. Purdy made us think about pretzels to start our essay, it was weird, but it worked. So, Mr. Purdy said, what do you want to discover detectives? What do you want to research that hasn't been researched before? Think about it. Mm, maybe I could research something about Las Vegas. Dad had moved there about four years ago with his new wife, Marissa. He was little Johnny Coconut, the singer. 
he made up the last name and then he made it legal. Now it was for real last name. Dad took our dog Chewy to Las Vegas when he left. I smiled remembering that little rat-nosed mutt. Dad kept him a lot cleaner than I kept Streak. But I figured why give a dog a bath when she just going to get dirty all over again. Hey, an idea for my research project popped into my head. It was a weird one. I liked it. Stampede. How about movies, Mr. Purdy? Ace asked. Can we do that? Sure you can. Just come up with a unique question to start things off. Something like, why do kids reach under their movie seats to see if something is someone stuck gum there? Ask a question, then answer it. Eek, Shyla said. I'm not doing that one. I grinned, thinking of a question I had come up with. Why do dog have a stink breath and how can you unstink it? Shayla said, can we work with a partner, Mr. Purdy? She glanced at me. I put my elbows on my desk and covered my face with my hands. Where was that dog breath when you needed it? If Streak had been on my lap, I would have aimed her nose at Shayla. But maybe even that wouldn't make her go away. Exactly what I had in mind, Shayla. You will work in teams of two. Everybody sat up trying to grab good partners. I glanced at Willie, Julio and Ruben, Maya, Ace. Anyone but Shayla. Mr. Purdy showed us a sheet of paper tacked to the bulletin board. I have already chosen your partners. You may get up quietly to go see who your fellow detectives is. Chairs screeched back, stampeding feet rolled towards the front of the room. I squeezed my way up to the bulletin board. My partner was Julio. Yes. Someone slapped the back of my head and turned. Julio flicked his eyebrows at me. I raised a fist and turned back to the list. Who else was paired up? Willie and Rubin, Ace and Durian. I glanced at Ace. How he feel about having to work with a girl? He seemed fine with it. He would. He liked everyone and everyone liked him. Who else? Maya and Shayla. Really? They were total opposites. I turned around to find Maya. This was so funny. She was sitting at her desk, looking like she has just swallowed a fly. Mr. Purdy clapped his hand. All right, find your partners and come up with a research question. You have got 10 minutes. Let's let the discoveries begin. Maya, I said, leaned over her desk. Did you see who you got? She gave me a look and that said, keep talking if you want. Your eyes crashed out. I staggered over Julio's desk, laughing my head off. Stinks. 